chapter 14, liquids, <laughs> solids, and then the properties of those liquids and solids. So first thing, so water and phase changes. We talked about this before. What are some characteristics of a gas? Fills the container, indefinite volume, and good, indefinite shape. There's a couple more here. Gases, they're low density. Do you remember what one of the assumptions was? What's one of the assumptions? I think it's the first one. Oh. Those particles are very far apart and they do not interact with, uh, with each other. They're small compared to the container. So if you think about one gas particle inside one of those like water bottles up there, it's extremely small. So gases, they have low density. If we look inside the container, we have a gas particle and then extra space, and then another gas particle and more space. So it's a low density. And then they're also highly compressible. Because we have all this space between gas particles, so you can see here, all this space inside this box, we can compress those gas particles, we can compress them, make them small. So it's highly compressible. And then lastly, it fills the container. Those gas particles are moving around. So it's going to fill that container. And now it's solid. Pretty much the exact opposite. It's a high density. You don't see much space in between those particles, do we? It's, they're very well packed together. So it's a very dense. If we put, so we put lead on top of water, does it sink or float? If we bubble oxygen or hydrogen underneath water, do they float or do they sink? They float, right? They, you see those bubbles going to the top. The solids, they're much more dense. We can, we can still compress the solid slightly, but not as much as a gas. Or from a, a solid is pretty much fully compressed, but there's still some room for some compression. It's like carbon. Everything takes solid carbon. And if we compress it, what do we get? What is it? Diamonds. So you can compress a solid, just not as much as you can compress a gas or a liquid. And that solid, it keeps its own shape. So if we put a strip of magnesium inside of a container, that strip of magnesium is still going to look like a strip of magnesium. So now the heating and cooling curve, we have on the x-axis your heat. We are adding heat at a constant rate. That's like we're taking a container, we're going to put it above a Bunsen burner that is set. We're adding heat at a constant rate. And we're going to measure that temperature, say water, inside that beaker. But instead of having initially water, we're going to have some cubes of ice. So you can see down here we have ice. As we add heat, that ice is going to increase in temperature. You can get ice that's less than zero, right? You can cool it even lower. So that ice is going to increase in temperature until it gets to zero. Then we have right here a mixture of ice and water. It's not pure ice and it's not pure water. We're going to have a mixture. But what do you notice about that line? It's flat. Yeah. That line is flat. We are increasing temperature. We're still adding, we are still adding heat. But the temperature of that ice and water mixture is staying at zero. That heat is going to melting the ice. It's not going to heat that water up. So we're going to stay at that zero Celsius. But as soon as all that ice melts, then we're going to start climbing in temperature for that liquid water. Now we're going to start climbing. And then once we get to the water and steam, what do you notice again? It's a flat line. So now we're going to have a mixture of water and steam. And that all that heat, that we're still adding heat at that constant rate, is going to go to warming up that water to create it into steam. So now, here's the problem. During the process of melting ice by adding heat, the temperature of the ice liquid water slurry 
What do you guys get? Stays constant. Why? So we found the right answer. We knew that from the previous slide. But the big question in science, why? This is still there. We have a mixture of ice and water. So as we add heat, that heat is going to go to melting the ice before warming up the water. Does that make sense? Yes? So we can explain that because it's a mixture. That energy is going to go to changing the phase from solid to liquid before it tries to change the temperature of the pure substance, the liquid. So phase changes. Phase change, we were just talking about this. When a substance changes from solid to liquid, and then liquid to gas, the molecules, they always remain intact. So that means if we're going from ice to water and the water to steam, are we breaking apart those H2O molecules? Are we breaking the hydrogen and oxygen bond? No, right? Because then it no, would no longer be water. If we're breaking the hydrogen and oxygen bond, it would no longer be water. So from solid to liquid, the motion of our molecules is going to increase. So solid to liquid, motions of molecules increase. So in ice, we have a very crystal structure. Those molecules are lined up very neatly. And then we're going to add some heat. Those molecules are going to start to move. When they start to move, they're going to slide around right next to each other. That's how we achieve the characteristics of a liquid. They can slide around, but they can no longer hold their own shape. They're going to take the shape of the container. So that water bottle is holding water. That water is going to take the shape of that water bottle. And then liquid to gas. The motion increases even more. So the motion of the molecule is going to increase even more going from our liquid to gas. And they're going to increase so much that those molecules are going to move apart. And we're coming back to our assumptions again with the gas. So in a solid, or so solid and liquid, our molecules are interacting with each other because they're real close. And as soon as we go from liquid to gas, we make that assumption that those molecules are so far apart, they are not interacting with each other. You guys remember that assumption? Hopefully if you watched it. And then there's the pool balls. The molecules bounce off each other. They do not stick or break each other apart. So now, intra molecular forces. This means within the molecule, intra. So like within the molecule. What how do we form bonds again? How do we form bonds? Yeah, electrons. What types of electrons though? Valence electrons. Our valence electrons are going to get shared in a molecule between the two atoms to form our molecule. So water, O2, H2. And this is what holds those atoms together. That is a type of intramolecular force. You guys remember some of those? What types of bonds do we have? I heard one. Covalent. Ionic. Polar covalent. So intermolecular forces. What do you think this means? Outside the molecule. So intermolecular forces we have outside the molecule. So before we had in, intra, so we had the polar covalent, covalent ionic. Now we're talking about inter, so between different molecules. Now, Philip, what'd you say here for the type of bond? Hydrogen bond. So our water molecule here, remember our polar bonds and a dipole moment? Yeah, so what's the dipole moment on water look like? Where is, which way is it pointing? Well, if we have our water, So on the one I just drew on the right, which way is it pointing? Points to more electronegative, right? So the oxygen atom. So which side is more negative? Oxygen. And then so this side is more positive, And those can interact. So here's our intermolecular forces. Here's the hydrogen with the partial positive side and the partial negative. We have a hydrogen bond. 
We've talked about, you guys remember the water before we talked about this? What angle? We just have, you can see here, the oxygen and then the hydrogen. They need to be in a straight line with each other so they can interact and form a nice strong hydrogen bond. So in a liquid, because they're so close, we don't have all that large amount of movement going on, they're close, they can't interact. When we start adding energy, we're going to increase the movement and then they're not going to be able to come as close and we form our gas or the steam. So inter, what is that? Intra, intramolecular bonds and then intermolecular bonds. These are, this is the difference of them. Okay, intra and inter. Which one do you think is greater? Intra. Intra. Why? Yeah, we're we're talking about within the molecule now. Yeah. So we're we're looking at those valence electrons, those intramolecular bonds. So the valence electrons that form those bonds are inside that molecule. When we add energy to water in a water bottle or just water in a beaker, are we breaking the hydrogen and oxygen bond? No, right? We're, what bond are we breaking though? The hydrogen bond, so the inter molecular force is what we're breaking. Yeah, good. So Jesse said that pretty well. The intermolecular forces, we can break, those are much weaker so we can break those bonds a lot easier. And that's how we can get it going from ice to liquid to gas. But those in the intramolecular bonds, the ones between the individual hydrogen and oxygen atoms, are much stronger. And it takes a lot more energy to break those. So first one, we just talked about energy. We talked about energy going between from solid to liquid to gas. So the molar heat of a fu uh, molar heat of fusion. That's the energy required to melt one mole of a substance. So molar heat of fusion is the energy to melt. So molar heat of vaporization is the energy required to change one mole of a liquid to vapor. So what do you think requires the most which one do you think is greater? Heat of vaporization or heat of fusion for the same substance? So let's think about water now. Let's think water. Ice, right? <laughs> so we're gonna take we're gonna take a cup of ice. We're gonna take a cup of ice. We're gonna take a we're gonna take a cup of ice and set it right here on the table. Right? Will that ice at this room temperature, will that ice melt? Will that ice, will that water start to boil? Not at room temperature, right? We got to add more energy. So, the molar heat, the molar heat of vaporization is going to be greater than the molar heat of fusion. So, which are stronger? Intra or inter, and why? So we got intra, but why? Yeah. So just we have a beaker of beaker of water and ice up here. We're not breaking apart those hydrogen and oxygen bonds, right? We're just breaking apart those hydrogen bonds. This is, we're gonna like put this all together now. We take a beaker with ice right here on the right on the table on let's say a hot plate. We start turning up the heat. What's gonna happen? So we go from ice to water. What types of bonds are we breaking there? Inter. Inter. And then we're going to go from water to what now? Gas. Gas, steam. What are we breaking there? More inter, right? And that's... But if we keep adding energy, so we're going to add, keep adding more energy and more energy, what's then going to happen? Intra. Then you can break those intra. Then you're going to break those, hydrogen, those individual hydrogen and oxygen bonds. Does that make sense? What types of electrons are in the intermolecular bonds? Yeah, valence electrons. Only valence electrons deal with bonding, right? And that's in the inter. And then intra, we're talking about dipole moments. So you remember the partial positive and partial negative? 
we're going to have a partial positive that's going to interact with another atom's partial negative. So now the next one. Which do you think is going to be larger? The molar heat of vaporization or fusion? And why? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how? let's think about this. How rigid is ice? Is it pretty like solid? Yeah, it's like a, it's a crystal structure. And when you think about crystals, think about like China, like crystal glassware. Is that very fragile? Yeah, it's fragile. So those bonds can very easily be shifted around. So you don't have to add that much energy to get those bonds to shift around and become a liquid for ice. Does that make sense? It's very easy to break that very nice crystal structure and get molecules just to barely start sliding apart. But then after they start sliding, it's going to take a lot more to get those bonds to completely remove. 